Good morning. Uh, this is October the 4th, Wednesday, and we are in BBIS first year, first semester English class. And in the previous session, if you remember, uh, we were reading uh, Munshi Premchand's story of a war line by line and uh, uh, if you remember uh, we were reading section one where we see Prema and Kesar having a heated discussion in a park where Kesar wants Prema to disclose their love affair to Prema's parents and prepare for marriage and Prema says that it's not easy for her to disclose this news because her parents uh, might be quite upset with this news. So, uh, let me show you where we left in the morning. Yes, this was the line. Let me just show. Here we are. You will drive me crazy with your rationalizations, Keshav said Rasi. Just understand this. If I am disappointed, I cannot go on living. I am a materialist. Let me go before this point. Mm. Here. Uh, Kesav says, I used to think those old ways, those old ways were just for silly hypocrites, but now it seems that educated girls like you knuckle under to, under to them too, since I am ready to give up everything for you, Kesav says, I am ready to give up everything for you. I expect the same from you. So in a narrative, you see the story starts in a normal way, right? normal situation. And soon you will see there is conflict in the story. For example, here you see a hint of this conflict. Conflict between old ways of life versus new ways of life. So do you see uh, this story portrays this conflict between old ways of life and new ways of life? And Kesav says, I'm ready to give up everything. But please keep in mind, Kesav doesn't follow what he says. Okay. In silence, Prema wondered what authority she had over her own life. This is a very crucial question. Prema wondered what authority she had over her own life. One issue that this story is raising is that women do not have any control over their own life. So do you see the story right? is criticizing the Indian culture. He is criticizing Indian culture and showing how in Indian culture women are oppressed 
And he's saying that women should have all authority over their own life. Having an authority over your own life means you should be able to decide for your life. Prema wants to marry Kesar, but Prema clearly understands that whom she marries is not decided by her, but by her parents. She had to, the next time, she had no right to go in any way against her mother and father who had created her from their own blood and reared her with love. So another conflict here you see, the conflict here, another conflict is, this is there is a conflict between the parents and the children. So this story shows conflict between generations. Conflict between generations, you see, she had no right to go anyway against the mother and father. In Indian culture, in conservative culture, in traditional culture, children are supposed to follow parents and parents take the crucial decisions of their life which is not always good. Okay. So, case of, to case of, she said humbly, can love be considered only in terms of husband and wife? Can love be considered only in terms of husband and wife and not friendship? I think of love as an attachment of the soul. Another theme of this story you will see in this line, Prema is an idealist because Prema believes in love at the level of soul, not body. And she says that we do not have to be wife and husband when we love each other. We can also be just friends. Do you see this conflict between, in this history of another conflict, conflict between idealism and materialism. Conflict between idealism and materialism. Kesav is materialist also in a while. Prema is idealist. Who, what is idealism? Plato propounded the idea of idealism because Plato said ideas are true, not their material manifestations. So then Prema says that love is attachment of the soul and Kesa means that love is an attachment of the body. So this is the conflict between body and soul. Conflict between body and soul, or conflict between uh, idealism and materialism. Then Kesab says, You will drive me crazy with the rationalizations. Kesab said, Harshly, just understand this. Now, Kesab has this threatening tone. Look what he says. Just understand this, Kesab says. If I am disappointed, means if Prema says no to Kesab's proposal of marriage, I can't go on living, means I will die. So Kesab is threatening Prema that he will commit suicide or he would sacrifice himself for her. But the surprising thing is when you finish reading the story, you don't see Kesab committing suicide. It's Prema who commits suicide. So Kesab does not do what he says and Prema does what she says. Look, Kesab clearly says, I can't relate. I am a materialist. Kesab. And it's not possible for me to be satisfied with some intangible happiness. When Prema says, when Prema says love can be attachment of the soul, nobody has seen the soul. Soul is intangible, invisible. So, Kesav says, I don't believe in that invisible love, invisible happiness of attachment between the two souls. 
in the world of imagination he caught prema's hand and tried to draw her toward him but she broke away and said very remarkable thing i like this line in when kesav holds prema's hand kesav is touching prema's body and prema does not allow kesav to touch her body kesav is materialist kesav believes in the body so look he he catches prema's hand but prema because she is not married to kesav yet she keeps her integrity she keeps her sanctity and doesn't allow kesav to hold her hand and she breaks away and what does she say i told you i am not free this is very remarkable line why is prema not free because her parents have authority over her so this is a debatable question is a daughter free to decide about her life is a daughter free to hold someone's hand or is she supposed to consult parents also i am not free don't ask me to do something i have no right to do what is kesav asking kesav is asking prema to love him and prema is saying i have no right to love you because whom i love is to be decided by my parents in my culture okay if she had spoken harshly he would not have been so hurt for an instant he restrained himself then he stood up and said sadly just as you wish and slowly walked away prema in tears continued to sing there let me tell you one point in this story now we finished reading section 1 so i said a story begins in a normal situation and then you will see conflict what conflict you see here prema follows old ways kesa follows new ways prema says she can't say no to her parents kesa says he can revolt with anybody for the law so there is conflict Kesa wants Prema to tell her parents about their love. Prema says she cannot tell it right now. So do you see a conflict has already started here? And when the section one ends, now Prema is in tears. When section one ends, Prema is in tears. So what does it mean? It means that. Now we have the conflict. Now this conflict will develop into complication. Things will become worse. And when we go to section two, we will see how things become worse in this uh, drama. Let's move ahead. So we come to section two, C two. Let's say C two. When after supper that night, Prema lay down in her mother's room. So this is the place where the scene takes place. Not down. The second scene takes place in mother's room. She could not sleep. She could not sleep. She the she the conflict. Why she could not sleep? Because in her mind, conflict was going on. Kesa had said things to her that shadowed her heart like reflections. Remember, this is simile. This is simile, which is a figure of speech. Kesa had said things to her that shadowed her heart like reflections. In unquiet waters, 
And whenever you find a simile, note down because this is an artistic dictated way of saying things. Changing at every moment and she could not calm them. How could she talk to her mother about such things is a problem? You all have. You boys and girls have the same problem. You fall in love and uh, you have this question. How can I talk to my mother about such a thing? So in, in Indian culture, for a daughter, for a daughter, it is almost impossible. It is impossible to tell her mother that she is in love with a boy of another caste. At that time, when you wrote this story, today things are changing. Embarrassment kept her silent. Look, it is, it is embarrassing for a girl to talk about love. Kept her silent. She thought, if I don't marry myself, what is left for me in life? Now, this is a very controversial line. We may debate about this. In one way, you can say, Prema is dedicated to Kesha. Prema has sincere love. Prema has pure love. Prema loves Kesha and only Kesha. Prema doesn't think about, think of anybody else. If I don't marry Kesha, what is left for me in life? In another way, I can say that this is a wrong way of thinking. Why should Prema think that if she doesn't marry Kesha, nothing is left? If she can't marry Kesha, there can be dozen Kesha. Girls, you have to think if Kesha isn't, is not there Kesha B, Kesha C, Kesha B. Why should we think that if I can't marry that boy, I'll die? So such a thinking makes Prema a weak character. Whether you agree or not, you decide. I say that Prema is a weak character. Somebody can say in this class that no sir, Prema is a devoted character, sacred character, pure character. She is very good girl. She loves a boy and she can't think of anyone else. But I will say she is a weak girl. Why? While she thought about it over and over again, her mind was made up about just one thing. Look here. Just one thing. If she did not marry Kesha, she would marry no one. This is a controversial line. In one way, you might think that Prema is an ideal girl. This is idealism. If you love somebody, marry. If not, don't marry anybody else. I don't Now, what is realism? What is realism? If you can't marry, marry somebody else, why should you ruin your life? Why should you ruin your life in the name of love to somebody? This definition of love is wrong to me. I'm simply giving you a chance for debate. Okay. Her mother said, he still not sleeping, not another thing. In, in a narrative, you have dialogue. In the previous class, I told you, focus on setting, focus on character. Then now, focus on dialogue. Because when there are characters, they say something to someone. He still not sleeping, I've told you so many times, you ought to do a little work around the house. Look here, very remarkable thing. Look, Teresa gender rule. What the mother says, you ought to do a little work around the house. In traditional societies, daughters are supposed to work in the house. But Prema is always busy studying, reading books. And mother says, work around the house. Here you see a glimpse of conservative society where daughters are encouraged to do domestic work to prepare for married life. But you can never take any time off from your off from your books in a little while. You will you will be going to some strange house. This is remarkable. The mother says you will be going to some strange house. Strange house. 
Because in Indian society, even in Pali society, many times girls have arranged marriage. And when you have arranged marriage, you don't get chance, many times, you don't get chance to know the family when you have to go to Strange house. And who knows? See the chance. This is fertilism. This is fertilism. Your future depends on faith. Who knows what sort of place it will be? If you don't get Siddha, girls' life depends on if. If you don't get accustomed to doing housework, how are you going to manage? So traditionally, girls are supposed to learn housework. It is believed that it is thought that girls should work inside the house. But times are changing now. Today, you have come to college, you are getting, being educated, and you will, when you finish your BBS study, you will get jobs, you will earn money. Right? Naively, Prema asked, she pretended as if she was a lady. Why? Why will I be going to a strange house, father? Inside the mind, Prema is thinking, I am going to Kesar's house. Smiling, her mother said, for a girl, it is the greatest calamity, daughter. It means marriage. Marriage in Indian Nepali society is a calamity for daughters because after marriage, daughters lose more freedom. For a girl, it is the greatest calamity, daughter. After being sheltered at home as soon as home as soon as she has grown up, off she goes to live with others. If look, if she gets a good husband, look, things depend on chance. Look here. If she gets a good husband, why? If because her parents are in the marriage, her days pass happily. Otherwise she has to go through life weeping. So what do you see? Girls' life depends on faith. Girl's life depends on luck. Girl's life depends on chance, not on their decision. Not on their decision. See the criticism of culture. Otherwise, she has to go through weeping. It all depends on faith. So you see, fatalism, the theme of fatalism in this story, we call Bhagyabha. So this story has a theme of fatalism. Things depending on faith. But in our community, our, our community means the Banya community. Banya community. In our community, there is no family that appeals to me. That means Prema's parents for a long time have been looking for a suitable boy for her. There is no proper regard for girls anywhere. This I like this line. I like this line. Because here Prem Chand is criticizing Indian culture. There is no proper regard for girls anywhere. As a writer, Prem Chand is a progressive writer. But we have to say where we stay within our car. Look here. This is problematic line. We have to stay within our car. This is a controversial line. Because in this story, one message is you should break the caste lines and you should have been caste marriage. But we have to stay within our caste. Who knows how long caste marriages are going to go on. So one theme of this story is caste marriage. And a conflict in this story is caste marriage versus intercaste marriage. The conflict is caste marriage versus intercaste marriage. Okay. Frightened now. Now when when Prema hears this, when Prema hears her mother, when Prema hears this sentence from mother, we have to stay within our caste. And now Prema, a one year girl, is a love, love with Brahmin boy. Now she feels frightened. She is frightened. Why she is frightened? Because she sees that mother doesn't approve into caste love. Frightened Prema said, but here and there they are beginning to have 
analysis outside the cast. She said, if for the sake of talking, but she trembled lest her mother might guess something good. When the talk is about caste, Prima trembles. See the situation. How serious is this taken? Surprised, her mother asked, You don't need among Hindus, mother says. Hindus never have to caste, marriage, mother says. Then she answered herself, If this has happened, means if any Hindu has had intercaste marriage in few places, then what has come off? Indicating that the consequence, the consequence of intercaste marriage has never been good. The mother says that whoever has intercaste marriage, there is always never good. Prema did not reply. She was afraid her mother had understood her meaning. She saw her future in that moment before her life. Look, another remarkable figure this speech. Her future is compared to a great dark tunnel opening its mouth to swallow her. Look, this is called foreshadowing. In stories, writers hint their, their readers, writers hint their readers about, about what, is, what is coming in future in the story. And here we have the hint. My future is like a great dark tunnel. This is a simile. This is a simile which is a figure of speech. You should put it down. Okay? And this also foreshadowing. The story writer is telling the reader what is coming on in the story. Her future is like a great dark, is like a great dark tunnel opening its mouth to swallow her. It was a long time before she could sleep. So do you see when we come here, when we come here, the story is started, if you if you recall. The story started with normal situation. Then there was conflict and now we have complication. Now we have complication. Things are getting worse. Just a minute. When she got up early in the morning, is this third section? Yes. I guess we are. Yes. Now we are in the third scene. In the third scene, scene three. When she got up early in the morning, Prema was aware of a strange new kind. In the story, there is something called plot development. Look, this story began with normal situation. There was conflict. There was complication. The complication was it. Now it's changing. Up to here, up to here, Prema has no courage to go against her parents. Now here you see, here what is happening? You see a strange new courage in Prima. A strange new courage. We all make important decisions on the spur of the moment. A spur of the moment is instantly, as though some divine power impelled us toward them. And so it was with Prima. Until yesterday, she 
have considered her parents' ideas as unchallengeable, as unchallengeable, but facing the problem, courage was born in her. Look. How do you gain courage? Look. Facing the problem. When Prema faced the problem, courage was born in her. This, this story is teaching you girls, hello girls, whenever you face problem, always have courage to face it. Much in the way a quiet breeze coming against the mountain sweeps over the summit. See, much in the way, this is, this is, and this is an analogy. This is a simile. Prema's courage to face the problem is compared to the breeze facing the mountain, sweeps over the summit in a violent gust. So there is a comparison between Prima facing the problem with courage and the wind facing the mountain and going across it. See this simile or, or analogy. Prima thought, a greed, this body is my mother's and father's. Okay. You know, in traditional society, uh, parents always say, Timlai Mari Zanna Koin, Timlai Mari Hukha Koin, Timi Timbra Jumbo Rakhata Mariyas Koin, Gas Kaka Pa Koin, Mai 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 my soul is to get must be got in this body. To hesitate now, important line, to hesitate now would not only be unfitting, it would be fatal. Why fatal? Because case of shared earlier, if you remember in section one, if you disappointed me, I will end my life. So to hesitate now, Prema thinks, now I must be frank and tell my parents to hesitate now, to hesitate to disclose love now can be, will be un not only be unfitting, but will be fatal. Why? Because case of my end is mine. Why? Why sacrifice your life for false principles? This is important. Look how Prema thinks. Prema is a round character. Who is a round character? One who changes as the story goes. One who develops. In section 1, we have seen how Prema said, I cannot go against traditions and my family and parents. Here you see CAC changing while sacrifice your life of first principle. In drama, in a story, we have two types of characters. Those characters who do not change over the story and those characters who change. And you will see both Kesar and Prema change a lot. They are both round characters who develop and change. Why sacrifice your life for false principles? Very important life. You should learn. You should not sacrifice your life for false principles. What are the false principles? Caste system. Prince is implying that caste system is false principle. If a marriage is not founded on love, and if it is founded on caste, then it's just a business bargain with the body. Could you give yourself without love? And she rebelled against the idea that she could be married off to somebody she had never seen. So Prema rebels against Parinth marriage. I'll encourage you, here Prem Chun seems to be speaking against Parinth marriage and in kind of law marriage. There is an essay, I forgot the writer's name, the title of the essay is Arrange Marriages in India. I repeat, there is an essay. Arrange marriages in India, where an American Indian comes to India and does a research on arranged marriage, and she says that arranged marriages are not less than are not uh, 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 less effective than love marriages. 
And she shows that how in arranged marriage in India is good. I'll encourage you to read the essay and come to class and have a day. Okay. After breakfast, she had started to read when her father called her affectionately. Yesterday, I went to see your principal and he had a lot of praise for you. Look how clever the father is. The father has come to talk about Prema's marriage because the mother might have told daddy. And now, before the father can disclose the topic of marriage, father first praises the daughter. You are only saying that, no, it's true. Then he opened the drawer of his desk and took out a picture shed in a velvet frame. There was a picture from newspaper with a frame, a boy's, uh, a boy's picture. He showed it to her and said, this boy came out first in the civil service examinations. You must have thought of him. Have you seen even in our society? The, the first criteria for a suitable uh, bridegroom is is job, government job. If a boy has got government job, then he will be the best candidate for marriage. This boy came out first in the civil service examination. You must have heard of him. This is how the father opens the topic of marriage. He had brought up the subject in such a way as not to give away his intention, but it was clear to Prema she saw through, to see through means to understand. Prema understood father's intention. It was without looking at the picture. Prema was not interested in that picture, in that boy. She said, no, I don't know who he is. And when Prema said that, she does not know the boy in the picture. With faint surprise, the father pretended to be surprised. Pain pretended. With faint surprise, her father said, What? You haven't even heard his name? His picture and an article about him are in today's paper. Suppose they are, so what? Prema said. Prema said, the examinations don't mean anything to me. I always assume that people who took those exams must be terribly conceited, deceptive. After all, what do they aim for except to lord it over their wretched, penniless brothers? She is saying that government job holders are corrupt and pile up a fortune doing it. That's not that. That's uh, that's not a great career to aspire to. The objection was spiteful. Now Prema's father felt very bad. Prema's father had thought that Prema would easily agree when he brings the proposal for, from a boy who is having a government job. But Prema's father felt very bad. He felt spiteful on this. Her father had assumed that after his theology praise, after his praise of Prema, she would be interested. When he had listened to her answer, he said softly, You talk as though money and power mean nothing to you. Look, look. Prema's father is also a materialist. Because he believes in money and power. That's right, she said. They don't mean a thing to me. Now, Prema says, money and power are nothing to me. That means Prema is idealist. Prema's father is materialist. So in this story, the conflict at one level is between idealism and materialism. Some boys. So here Prema has 
केसर भी ना पाए बिकॉज केसर सेफ आई विल डाई इफ से नो टू मी सो सी थिंक्स दैट केसर हैज दिस क्वालिटी ऑफ सेल्फ सेक्रीफाइस बट एक्चुअली प्रेम आज रॉफ केसर डजेंट हैव दिस क्वालिटी ऑफ सेल्फ सेक्रीफाइस वाल आई हैव लर्न समथिंग न्यू टुडे ही सेड सार्कास्टिकली सार्कास्टिक Well, I've learned something new today. When you speak sarcastically, you, in a sense, make a shot. Well, I've learned something new today. He said sarcastically. I still, I see people swarming around trying to get the meanest little job. Just like to, I would just like to see the face of one of. These fellows, couple of self, self, self sacrifice. If I did, I would get down on my knees to him. He says, bring that fellow. I went down on my knees to him with respect. Perhaps if she had heard these words on another occasion, Prema might have hung her head in shame. But this time, Prema had said, you know, this time, like a look, see. Another scene. Please, in a note copy, make a list of all the similes in this story where two things are compared. But but this time, like a soldier, writer compares Prema with a soldier, with a dark with a dark tunnel behind him. There was no way for her to go except for what? Is scarcely controlling her anger, her eyes full of indignation. She went to her room. And from among several pictures of Kesar, picked out the one she considered the worst and brought it back and set it down in front of her. Oh, look, look at him, look Prema, the old Prema who said in the scene one that she cannot go against parents. Look at him, he wanted to give it no more than a casual glance, but at the first glimpse he was drawn to it. Kesar was tall. And even though him one recognized the strength and discipline about him, he was not particularly handsome. But his face reflected such intelligence that one felt confidence in him. Why? Why he looked at it? Her father said, "Who is he?" The father said, "Who is he?" Prema, bowing her head, said. Hesitantly, he is in my class. Is he of our community? Now, this is this is a crucial question. In drama, you start normal, conflict appears, things get complicated, and there is a crisis. Crisis is that point where things become worse, and this is point of crisis. I'll say because all problems start when this person comes. Is he of our community? See, in traditional society like India and Nepal, whenever you decide marriages, the most simple, important person is Kesha ho, Kesha ho. This person. You know what I mean? Oh, see, this is reality. Is he of our community? Prema's face clouded over. The moment the father put this question, her face is clouded over. Because Prema knows that Kesha belongs to Brahmin community and she comes from Banya community. Her destiny was to be decided on the answer. If if the answer was yes, he is from our community. She will be married. If no, then marriage also no. See the bitter reality. She realized that it was useless to have brought out the, that picture. The fondness she had had for an instant weekend before this simple question. This is this is ironical. It's not a simple question. This is a very complex question. The question, "Jahan ke ho?" sounds simple, but this is very complex question in society. It brings 
unexpected consequences. What's the community? This simple question. In a low voice, she said, No, he is not. He is a Brahmin. And even while she was saying it, agitated, she left the room as though the atmosphere there were suffocating her. And on the other side of the wall, she began to cry. Do you see in the story? She began to cry next. The story is getting complicated. The story is getting complicated. Things are getting worse for Prima. Her father's anger was so great at first. Look, how did the father feel? Angry. Her father's anger was so great at first that he wanted to call her out again and tell her many it was impossible. He got as far as the door for seeing Prima crying, his anger softened. He was aware of what Prima felt for this boy. The father realized that his daughter has intense love for the boy. And he believed in education. He believed in education for women. One remarkable thing about this father character. You know, look, the father believed in education for women. But he intended to maintain the family traditions. So this father was crushed. This father was crossed between tradition and morality. Look, this character, I, I feel pity on this father. On one side, this father wants to maintain the family tradition, look, family tradition. But he also wanted to give education to a daughter. But an educated daughter tends to take her life decisions itself. He would have sacrificed all his property for a suitable bridegroom of his own caste. He would have sacrificed all his property for a suitable bridegroom of his own caste. But outside the limits of his community, he could not conceive of any bridegroom worthy or noble enough. He could not imagine any disgrace greater than going beyond them. Look, in Indian society, in South Asian society, going, going outside your caste, and community is disgrace. What is disgrace? Disgrace is insult. Biggest insult possible. Disgrace is like somebody puts somebody puts somebody smears his face in black. So do you see the conflict here, conflict between what the society says and what the individual says. Prema as an individual loves Kesa, but society says no, you cannot. From today, the father says, from today on, you will stop going to college. He said with a harsh tone, if education, look here, if education teaches you to disregard our traditions, then education is wicked, harsh view. But here's a debate question. He said, if education teaches you to disregard our tradition, but the question is, education must teach you to disregard evil traditions. And caste system is an evil tradition. So when educated prema stands up against caste system. It's a good thing that Prema is doing. It's a good thing that education is making a change. Directly Prema said, but it's 
almost time for the examiners. My father says, forget about them. Then he went into his room and pondered a long time. Look, look, father's authority. He said, forget about them and Prema has to forget. Earlier Prema said, I have no authority over my life. Look here the truth. One day, six months later, Prema's father came. Now, by the time you come to scene four, scene four, by the time we come to scene four, six months have passed. There is the moment in story. One day, six months later, Prema's father came home and called Vridha, Prema's mother's name, his wife, for a private talk. Now, in scene four, you have Prema's father and Prema's mother talking. As far as I know, he said, Kesar is a well brought up and brilliant boy. Look, in six months, Prema's father's attitude has changed. A brilliant boy. I am afraid that Prema is grieving to the point where she might take her life. Look, he says, Prema might commit suicide. You and I have tried to explain, and so have others, but nobody has had the slightest effect on her. What are we going to do about it? Anxiously, his wife said, Let her, but if she has her way, how can you face the dishonor? See this question. How can you face the dishonor? So the problem is the dishonor. What will others say? What will society say? Saman is like a man. Does why like a man? Not a pata like a man. Wow, wait. Up to that day, we were. When you go to the bounce, see this attitude. See the problem. Dishonor. Have you heard about the word honor killing? Honor killing is a social evil in Nepalese Tarai as well as India and Pakistan, where parents, as we read in newspapers, sometimes kill their daughters simply because the parents think that the decision that the daughter took about love goes against family traditions. So they kill their children to, to, to protect family traditions. This is a bad thing. How could I ever have born, what the mother says, how could I ever have born a wicked girl like that? He frowned and said with a tone of reproach, I have heard that a thousand times, but just how long can we moan about this caste tradition? Look, the father is changing. The father is changing. How long can we moan about this caste tradition? Business, you are mistaken if you think the bird is going to stay hopping at home once it has spread its wings. He says, see the analogy. The bird has become young. She won't stay in our nest any longer. She will fly one day. So get her married before she flies. I have thought about the problem objectively. Means I've thought it without being emotional. And I have come to the conclusion that we are obliged to face the emergency. I can't watch Prema die in the name of caste rules. Here you see, father also changes. So father is also a Raman character. Because he changes his attitude. Let people laugh, but the time is not far off when all these old restrictions will be broken. Even today, there have been hundreds of marriages outside the caste limitations. If the aim of marriage, see this thing, if the aim of marriage is happy life for a man and a woman together, we cannot oppose them. This is the important line. Britta was angry. If that is your intention, then why ask me? She said, but I say that I won't 
have anything to do with this marriage and I will never look at that girl's face again. Oh God, how stable the mother is. I will consider her as dead as our sons who died. Oh God, look, Vritta is a very good example of traditional conservative woman. Well then, what else can you suggest? What if we do let her marry this boy? He will take his civil service examinations in two years and with what he has to offer, it will be a great deal if he becomes a clerk in some office. But what if Prema should kill herself? Then let her, oh God, look. The mother says, let her kill herself. You have encouraged her, haven't you? If she does not care about us, why should we, why should we blacken our name for her? Anyway, suicide is no gain. It's only a threat. The, when, when, I, when I scanned this book to prepare a soft copy, there is a problem. So please, uh, be at it. It's only a threat. Uh, I don't know what's the line here. Let me check from the book and read for you. Mm. Oh. oh, yes, yeah. I the heart is like a wild horse. The line. The heart is like a wild horse. Another simile, and I told you, make a list of all the similes in the story. The heart is like a wild horse until it is broken and bridled. Nobody can touch it. If her heart stays like that, it's her. Please read it her. If her heart stays like that, who is to say that she will look after Kesab for a whole lifetime? Oh God, the mother says, today she loves Kesab, tomorrow she might love somebody else. The way she is in love with him today, well, she can be in love with somebody else just as much tomorrow. And because of this, you are ready to be distressed. So mother thinks that intercast marriage will bring disgrace. should agree to the children what they decide. I have never, uh, it had never occurred to Brinda that the problem could have such a dreadful ending. His meaning struck her with the violence of a bullet. See the simile here, comparison. Metta said, she sat silent for a moment as though she, sh as though so shock had scattered her wits. Then, backing down, she said, What wild ideas you have until today. I've never heard of a decent girl marrying according to her own wish. This line. If a girl marries according to her own wish, she is not a decent girl. She is a traditional thinking. You may not have heard of it, but I have, Mother says. I have seen it, and it's entirely possible. The day it happens will be my last. Oh God, look, the mother says, the day my daughter marries, according to her wish, I will commit suicide. But if it has to be this way, isn't it preferable that we make the, pro we make the proper arrangements? If we are to be disgraced, we may as well be efficient about it. Send. Send for Kesar tomorrow and see what he has to say. Kesar's father lived. 
when a, when a government pension, by nature, now we hear about Esopha, by nature he was ill-tempered of God. He was ill-tempered. And miserly, he found satisfaction only in religious ostentation. He was totally, pay attention to the characterization of Keshav's father. Keshav's father has been portrayed as a conservative Brahmin. He was totally without imagination and unable to respect the personal feelings of anybody else. At present, he was still living in the same world in which he had passed his childhood and youth. That means Keshav's father had the old traditions, old thinking. The rising tide of progress he called ruination and hope to save at least his own family from it by any means available to him. Therefore, when one day Prema's father came to him and broached the prospect of marrying Kesa, old Kandiji could not come to himself. Staring through eyes dim with anger, he said, Are you Are you drunk? Kesav's father said to Prema's father, insulting. Are you drunk? Whatever this relationship may be, it is not marriage. It appears that you too have had your head turned by the new ideas. So this conflict is between new ideas versus old ideas. I don't like this sort of connection either. Prema's father said gently, my ideas about it are just the same as yours. For the thing is that being helpless, I have to come to see you. You are aware too of how willful today's youngsters have become. It's getting hard. Sorry. It's getting hard for us all the time. So this is this is very so conflict between old time and new time. To defend our theories, I'm afraid that if these two become desperate, they may take their lives. and shouted, what are you saying? What are you saying, sir? Are you a saint? We are Brahmins. And even among Brahmins, we are of high rank. Look here. Here you see the caste system. And the false hierarchy. No matter how low a Brahman may fall, he can never be so degraded that he can come that he can countenance a marriage with a shopkeeping Banya's daughter. The day noble Brahmans run out of daughters, we can discuss the problem. I say you have a fantastic nerve even to bring this matter up with me. How dare you come to me with this proposal of Father Sage? He was, he was every bit as furious as Prema's father, as humble and the latter, unable to be at the humiliation. Prema's father was badly humiliated by Kesab's father. Any longer went off cursing his luck. Just then Kesab returned from college. Panditji sent for him at once and said severely, I have heard that you are betrothed to some Banyaga, how far has this actually gone? Pretending ignorance, Kesar said, Who told you this? Look, oh God, this is a very critical moment. Look, Kesar is trying to hide from his father. In scene one, he said, I can revolt against my parents. Somebody, I am asking you, is it true or not? If it is true, 
and you have decided to uh, if you have decided to go against your caste then there is no more room for you in this house see you won't get one piece of my money whatever is in this house i earn and it is my right to give it to whomever i want if you are guilty of this wicked conduct into caste law was wicked for this money you won't be permitted to put your food inside my house to oh god see this donkey <laughs> Okay. Kesa. Kesa was familiar with his father's temper. He loved Prema and he intended to marry her in secret. His father would not always be alive and he could not and he counted on his mother's affection. Sustained by that love, he felt that he was ready to suffer any hardship. But Kesab was, see this thing, like a faint-hearted soldier who loses his courage. Look, Kesab was like a faint-hearted soldier who loses his courage at the sight of a gun. So Kesab's father was the gun. Who was the gun? Kesab's father. And turns back, like any average young fellow, he would argue his theories with a passion and demonstrate his devotion with his tongue, but to suffer, but to suffer for them was beyond his capacity. Look, Kesa would talk about change, but he was not ready to suffer for change. So when his father said, get out of my home, he thought his father was a gun. If he, if he persisted and his father refused to weaken, he did not know, he did not know where he would turn. His life would be ruined without his father's help. In a low voice he said, whoever told you that is a complete lie of God, look how Kesa Rachel, and nothing else. He staring at him, Panditji said, So my information is entirely mistaken? Yes, entirely mistaken. Then he will write a letter to that shopkeeper this very moment and remember that if there is any more of this gossip, he can regard you as his greatest enemy in a go. Kesav. Kesav could say no more. Kesav could say no more. He walked away, but it seemed to him that his legs were utterly numb. The next day, last scene. The next day, Prema sent this letter to Kesav. The important letter. Dearest Kesav, Prema writes. Dearest Kesav, where is yes? Dearest Kesar, it was terribly upset, sorry, I was terribly upset when I heard about the rude and callous way your father, means Kesar's father, your father treated my father. Perhaps he has threatened you too, in which case, in which case I wait anxiously to hear what your decision is. I am ready to undergo any kind of hardship with you. Look, Prema. Goes with the promise. I am aware of your father's wealth, but all I need is your love. All I need is your love. This is where you see the idealism of Prema at its climax. Idealism. I don't need money, I need you. But you know, in truth, it's not like that. To content me, come tonight and have dinner with us. My mother and father are both eager to meet you. I am caught up in the dream of when the two of us will be joined by that bond that cannot be broken. Look, Prema says, I want to be married to you. That remains strong no matter how great the difficulty is, your Prema. So Prema invites Kesar home. 
by evening there had been no reply. Now look, the story, the, the story is given to us, speak, crisis, crisis. Prema's father asked over and over again, isn't Kesat coming? And her father kept his eyes glued on the door. By 9 o'clock, there was still no sign of Kesat, nor any letter. In Prema's mind, all sorts of fears and hopes revolved. Perhaps Kesat had had no chance to write a letter, no chance to come today so that tomorrow he would surely come. She read over again the love letters he had written her earlier. How steeped in love was every word in those letters. How much emotion, anxiety and acute desire. Then she remembered the words, then she remembered the words he had said a hundred times and often he, would, he had wept before her. It was impossible to despair with so many proofs, but all the same, throughout the night, she was tormented by anxiety. Now, last scene. Early, all throughout the night, now the this is come back in. Throughout the night, she was tormented by the anxiety because Kesam didn't come, didn't reply. Early in the morning, Kesam's answer came to God. What answer came? Prema took the letter with a trembling hands and read it. The letter fell from her hands. It seemed to her that her blood had ceased to flow. He had written. Let's read the letter. Kesam writes, I am in terrible Pandari. Pandari means in a situation where you cannot take decision. I am a terrible Pandari about how to answer you. I have been desperate trying to figure out what to do and I have come to the conclusion that for the present it would be impossible for me to go against my father's of God. Look, in scene one, in the Victoria part, Kesab said that he can do anything for Prima. And he said that he will reward against his parents also. But here he says, for the present, it would be impossible for me to go against my father's orders. Don't think I am a coward. Here comes the question. A coward. And the question is, who is a coward? Don't think I am a coward. I am not being selfish either. But I don't have the strength to get over the obstacles. So do you see, Kiesa is crushed under the dictates of society. So here is a conflict. Individual Kiesa versus society or I say family. Why Kesab says, I don't have the strength to get over the obstacles? Because father said, get out of my home. No food, no shelter, no lodging. Now, but here is a debate. We can have a debate. Kesab could have revolted. But I don't know, you decide. Forget what I told you before, oh God. This is in, in this impossible way. Forget what I told you before. At that time, I have no idea of how hard it was going to be. Young people like you when you fall in love, you have no idea how hard it is going to be. And when things become really hard, you crumble, you surrender, like Kesa. Prema drew a long painful breath. Then she tore up the letter and threw it away. Her eyes filled with tears. She had never had the slightest expectation that the case of she had taken into her heart of hearts as her husband could be so cruel. It was as though until now she had been watching a golden vision, but on opening her eyes it had vanished. Completely all her hope had disappeared and she was left in darkness. 
What did Kesav write? Mother asked. Prema looked at the floor and said, He is not feeling well. The distance is different in him. What else was there to say? She could not have borne the shame of revealing Kesav's brutal disloyalty. Look, Kesav's brutal disloyalty. She spent the whole day working around the house as though there were nothing wrong. She made dinner for everyone that evening and ate with them. Then, until quite late, she played the harmonium and sang. In the morning, they found, they found her lying dead in a room at a moment when the golden rays of dawn bestowed on her face the illusory splendor of God. She was dead, but the rising sun's rays threw light on her face. See the irony. Prema was found dead, and we don't know what happened, but I guess she committed suicide. The story doesn't clearly say she committed suicide. But it's my guess. So I leave you with a question. Now we have read the story, uh, and you have a question. Who is coward in the story? So you take a note copy, pause my video again, and make a note on this story based on my video. I've talked a lot about the conflict in the story. And talk about theme, write words about theme, what is the conflict for the theme. Talk about in your note copy, in your note copy, talk about the plot development. Normal situation, conflict, complication, conflict, complication, conflict, complication, things getting worse, right? Then all of a sudden, Prema, huh? Here you have this question, cast, all of says, what cast? You can draw a picture where you create a diagram showing your development of the plot. So read this story a couple of times, and enjoy, and think about it. And when you come to class, we'll have a discussion. So, uh, note down if you have some questions to ask me. And when we meet again next class, you can ask me questions. So, uh, in exercise, let's check exercises. It says, in your journal, write about one of the following topics. Explain the main point or message of the problem. I will answer, we decide, you have a point, show me. Discuss whether you would marry someone if your parents were against it. Choose a topic of your own. You can write about uh, caste, marriage, and empire. Intercaste, marriage, and empire. What else do we have? Let's check. That's all. So, I read all the way from section 1 to section 6 quickly and uh, I passed my comments. Uh, you can Google for more uh, comments on the internet. You can watch YouTube videos if you have one. Uh, do whatever you like but come to my class with full understanding. I made this very really just a uh, 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 support material for you uh, because I wanted to help you to learn better. So uh, see you next class and then there we will discuss. Thank you.